Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Thanks. Sorry, I give him quality thanks. All across the globe, give him quality thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercies. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. You are a good God, the wonder walking God. Thank you for light. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness upon my life. Is someone praying? A grateful heart. A desperate heart. Thank you, Jesus. Now ask him to give you an encounter tonight. Appear unto me by your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Let it elevate me to a new realm in the spirit, a new dimension, a higher level of experience in the spirit. A hungry heart is praying. A desperate heart is crying unto God. My eyes are fixed on you. Fixed on you, Jesus, for my transformation. Fixed on you, Jesus, for my healing. Fixed on you, Jesus, for my elevation. Fixed on you, Jesus. For the accomplishment of your speakings over my life in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray our eyes are on you tonight oh god we pray that your word will come strong upon our hearts break away stony hearts give us hearts of flesh give us wisdom cause us to experience you in a greater dimension we vow to give you all the glory and to you be all the praise given tonight for in jesus name we have worshiped and prayed shout a loud amen god bless you please be seated good evening everybody the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord many things happen in the house of the lord there is understanding in the house of the lord you encounter the god of the bible when you come to the house of the lord hallelujah there is fellowship one towards another hallelujah the bible says if we walk in the light as he's in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son cleanses us from all unrighteousness and um May tonight be one of such encounters for you in the name of Jesus. I honor everyone. Thank you so much for your commitment and your diligence to learn. I want you to see yourselves as students in the school of the spirit. Um, I have told you and it is worthy of a reminder that you are beyond members, beyond congregants, beyond fans. Hallelujah. This is a destiny project. God is making men. God is building men. God is furnishing men in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that which you hear tonight will contribute to your growth and your excelling in the spirit. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Again, we're honored to have Her Excellency in our midst, Dr. Howard Taylor. Let's give her a big, big God bless you, the former Vice President of Liberia. God bless you, ma. Thank you so much for making the time to fellowship with us. 
in Jesus name hallelujah now let me encourage you before we go straight to the teaching of the word tonight that you have a role to play in your becoming God's expectation for you God has a desire he has an expectation for you but whether or not you will become that portrait in experience does not just depend on God doesn't even just depend on the preacher it depends on your cooperation and your participation hallelujah God's role is to give the word and to supply the grace my assignment is to teach you so diligently by the Spirit to help you understand the ways of God and to become a channel for that grace to flow through your life but your own role is to receive by faith to understand the truths and to obtain grace to engage it are we together you are the final factor that is responsible for your becoming the final factor that is responsible for the manifestation of God's word in your life and if you do not play your role effectively God can play his role effectively I can play my role effectively but your results will still be short the reason is because that which depends on you you did not do diligently and so it's important for you to understand this tripartite cycle that God has a role to play in your becoming in your excelling his role is to send his word his role is to supply grace because everything comes from him my role as a prophetic midwife is to help you interpret the speakings of God and to communicate the counsel of God that makes for your holistic development hallelujah and then to allow through my life that the requisite grace that must rest upon your life per season for your making for your building but your own role is to have a prepared heart to number one receive believe and then obtain grace to engage if you do not engage the truths that you hear you will never see the results in your life that is the truth they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it hallelujah so it's important for us to not waste the abundance of light that God is granting us access to week after week um, I'm reminded of I think that should be um, Philippians chapter 2 Paul to the church in Philippi either 11 or 12 it says that you walk out your salvation the B part of that scripture I think that should be 12 Philippians 2 12 please give it to us and let's see yes wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed listen not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence he says walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling walk out your own salvation the picture that I have in my mind is the picture of a student no matter how diligent the lecturer is he will not write your exam for you hallelujah now yeah I can cook I can serve I can even help you I can support your eating but it cannot get to your stomach through my mouth it will only get to my own stomach through my mouth if it must get to your own stomach to nourish you then it must pass through your own mouth are we together so many believers have not taken the responsibility to insist that they must bear fruit the Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither he says whatsoever he doeth shall prosper it is your responsibility to cry for the dimensions that are missing in your life and your Christian experience and to stay there and insist until there is a performance in your life are we together now work out your own salvation let me tell you the truth at one point or the other every one of us will have to sit down like a student in the spirit and you will write your own exams you will write it by yourself and your level of preparedness 
determines whether you will pass the exams or not there are students who because of their diligence not just their intelligence their diligence they know they will pass the exams and it's not pride hallelujah i know students who are really very brilliant really very brilliant they may hardly read they just have that advantage of intelligence and they can write and pass but i know other students that may not be as you know intellectually sound but they use diligence to remedy for the absence of intelligence they literally stay and read and burn the midnight candles and do whatever it takes and eventually you will see that they excel some of us here you already have a leverage of a great spiritual heritage maybe your parents were already ministers maybe you had the opportunity to have a good foundation from the time you got born again you didn't have the opportunity to dabble into error and false teachings and nonsense so there's nothing much to correct yours is not necessarily renewal yours is just transformation there's minimal renewal because um your mind followed the right path through mentorship but others you are still doing a u-turn you've not even started the journey you are still doing a u-turn from a life of receiving wrong information your level of diligence will not be the same are we together now a child who had an opportunity to be mentored by a godly father a godly mother went to a godly mission school had the opportunity to be under mentors and tutors who taught them directly the truth is that provided that child is interested in becoming the rate at which that child will become will be faster richer better more predictable than an individual who got born again by himself maybe under a family of idol worship limited to serve the true living god because he was still under his parents had to wait 10 years in error to leave the house to now start correcting all those things you see you will you will need a greater strength of passion to contend for renewal and then transformation so as we're scattered here seated in this place let me tell you we are not at the same journey and it's not the same pace the level of what god is cleaning in my mind your mind your mind differs for others you've already you've made the job easy for the holy spirit others your parents have helped to make the job easy for the holy spirit are we together but there are others in truth your level the the level of transformation required it would take grace from god and because time is not on your side you must give them more diligence so that you can cover up grounds because based on the prophetic calendar of your life you should have been in ministry by now you should have been doing kingdom exploits by now and yet by now you are still learning the rudiments of the kingdom are you seeing that now if you have that orientation you pay attention a lot more than someone who can just freelance knowledge you listen with rapt attention with the intention to hear and to receive and then to become on time I pray for you that you will never trivialize the word of God in your life I pray for you that you will never trivialize transformation let me tell you one truth opportunities never present themselves as this at the same rate or the same level always a day is going to come you will not have this kind of convenience again for various reasons for various reasons are we together now there are people today that wish they had the opportunity to be here physically present but maybe their job maybe some other you know endeavor life has placed a demand on them there are people right now while service is going on they want to attend they literally are having to juggle between their jobs and then to follow online whilst they are listening and some of them are drawing from the residues of the days they had to eat for the journey being far are we together for someone god is asking you to eat because the nourishment from this food will not benefit you alone you have a cross to carry even for those connected to you maybe out of a family of six seven eight siblings you are the first to have come this far with god it can't be that God is working on you alone for yourself. 
imagine that your sister is listening to me in you your brother listening to me in you so you're not just listening for yourself you are listening for the sake of those who will be liberated from your attentiveness that means if you lose a word that you should receive you will also punish another person's destiny who is depending on you are we together so when you come to church pay attention pay attention let your heart be open let your spirit be ready to receive in the name of jesus christ now we're going to go into a two-part series tonight um my my desire for us like never before in this season is to be able to lay hold on eternal life and the principles that make for dominion more intentionally i have a goal for us by the spirit of god there is a standard and a reference that God desires every believer to attain unto. And it is my assignment to walk with the spirit of grace week in, week out, to keep chiseling those dimensions in our lives and to see that we become that portrait. I was standing up there where the media is the day the gentleman during the school of ministry practicum, the gentleman was trying to draw me. I had no idea what he was doing. I mean, of course, I knew it was me he was going to draw, but how it was going to happen, and with confidence, I was inverted. So I, I didn't even know whether it was me or not. And the gentleman with dedicated focus, never seen someone paint with both hands. I know that there are people who are ambidextrous, but I didn't know that, I mean, someone could do that kind of thing. And as he was painting with dedicated focus, I kept looking, and it started looking like me started looking like me started looking like me eventually i was still confused is this me again is this guy missing something which part of me i can't find my face am i inverted am i falling am i left am i right is it a mirror image what is he doing and when the gentleman was done all he did was to flip it and that was me looking really like me hallelujah do you know what that means you are like that portrait and there is something god is painting and even when you do not understand trust even when you do not understand trust when you do not understand trust 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 that you are becoming something when god flips you you will marvel and wonder so this is what he was doing this is the extent of wisdom he was putting in me this is the extent of power that he's putting within me. Are we together? This is the extent of favor I have been able to come into that. Let me tell you the truth. When God is done with you, all that will be left is beauty and glory. Do you believe that? The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 818 the glory that shall be revealed in us there is a dimension of glory that is going to be revealed in you going to be revealed in me and week in week out i want you to capture the picture of that my dear painter that's what god is doing hallelujah and i want you to know that the painter is not me the painter is God himself. I am the brush. He's using that brush. Are we together now? You are that canvas. He's painting something upon your life. And as for me and him, I've, I've made up my mind as a covenant to be and remain malleable. The brush is not rebellious. The brush looks dead. And you see the degree of death by the ease with which the painter can use the brush to write and paint on that canvas. Are we together now yours is to stay believing that god is molding you stay believing that god is the prophet is still forming the apostle is still forming the evangelist is still forming the kingdom financier is still forming the man the woman of influence esther is still forming the borah still forming gideon still forming you won't form in one day the guy knew what to do, but it took time for the portrait. That's how it is with God. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear. So for every truth that you are served with, receive it as a component of that portrait. Are we together now? Yes. 
if you receive it then you will watch the beauty and the glory that God brings out of your life he won't stop he won't stop till I look just like him he won't stop he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till I look just like him he won't stop he won't stop So I'm teaching on a two-part series called Greater Light. Part one, we'll be looking at the mysteries of dominion. Greater Light. Genesis 1, 16. Greater Light. The mysteries of dominion. And God made true great lights. The Bible says the greater light was given an assignment to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night keep that scripture there the greater light does not rule the night no the greater light only comes when there is day. The assignment of the greater light is to turn morning to shine at its brightest. When there is night, you do not need the greater light. The light from the moon is sufficient. And so here's how the journey is. The journey from night to afternoon starts this way. The moon gives light through the night. Are we together? And the moment the morning comes, the moon begins to fade in as much as we know and we can describe. And then the light from the moon is now replaced by the sun itself. Even though we know that there are many from it, the dimension we know and understand. The sun takes over from the moon. You would think because it were morning, the sun would not come. The assignment of the sun is to take over from the morning and turn morning to afternoon so the moon turns night to morning but once you get to the morning you do not need the moon again the moon may not be able to serve and the sun takes over there are many things that cannot happen in the morning even though it is no longer darkness it is difficult for your clothes to dry on time in the morning because many times with the morning will also come dew with the morning will also come a lot of things so there are inconveniences you are in your morning but it may not be enough to give the kind of result that you need sometimes even though it is morning it can affect visibility and flights can be grounded but once it is afternoon so the bible says the path of the just are we still here is as a shining light then it gives the progression that it shined more and more. The question is from where to where. It shined more and more. From the night time. Are we together? The dawning of a new day. And when the moon called the lesser light. Is done with its own ministry. Then the sun. The greater light. Now takes over. And the Bible says the greater light rules in the day. So the first assignment is for you to come out from night to day. When you get to day, you still need another kind of light that keeps you in dominion and causes you to shine at its brightest. The Bible says, arise, shine, Isaiah chapter 60. Are we still together? For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2, it says, for darkness shall cover the earth, give us verse 2, and gross darkness the people. It says, but upon you, the glory of the Lord shall rise and his glory shall be seen upon you. Verse 3 now, it says, Gentiles shall come to your light. Gentiles shall come to your but kings do not come to your light. Kings come to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles come to your light. The light that shows in your morning is enough to bring Gentiles, but not kings. Unfortunately, 
the gentiles do not come with treasures they don't have it it is kings that have the treasures the treasures that reward you are resident within the palaces of kings and the bible says the kings will come in honor to the brightness of your rising is someone learning now so god made two great lights they are all called great lights but now in terms of their power to illuminate and to turn darkness to brightness to glory the bible says the lesser light rules in the night but once you get to your day you now need the greater light someone say i receive greater light one more time say i receive greater light for one last time say i receive greater light amen and amen job chapter 38 and verse 33 popular scripture please give us niv or nlt the bible says do you know job 38 and verse 33 my apologies 33 33 or oh, well we can do 32 and then end at 34 it still falls in line can you direct the sequence of the seasons or guide the bear with the corpse across the heavens then it says do you know the laws of the universe nlt says um new living translation or um, niv i think it says do you know the laws of the heavens or so something like that and can you set up god's dominion upon the earth 34. it says can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself through that mystery with a cloud of water greater light this is very powerful so he's probing job here and he's asking job do you understand the mysteries by which the universe is regulated by the mysteries that are responsible for the supernatural extraordinary manifestations of power within our world first timothy as a reference chapter 2 when you read 1 to 4 particularly verse 4 the bible tells us that god desires that all men be saved and then let's just jump to verse 4 for time that we come unto the knowledge of the truth the knowledge of the truth now please look at me truth is in levels truth is in levels all truth can liberate all truth should liberate but they do not liberate at the same dimension truth is likened to light and light does not shine the illuminating power of light is not at the same dimension are we together when you have a flood of light the kind of brightness that can be produced from that dimension of light is by far different from that which comes from a phone or something of that sort hallelujah i think i gave this example already from this place that if you were in your nighttime at home notice the transitions in the kinds of lights that you use um sadly there are parts of the world that don't easily experience blackout but in africa we are accustomed to a lot of blackout where i mean everything just goes from the power holding company and you are left in pitch darkness now watch how it starts from pitch darkness the first thing you usually would do is to use your phone light or a lantern or a torch light that is light but remember that light is helping you find another kind of light you don't stop there you start with a torch light or a lantern am i right on that and then with a torch light or a lantern usually in fact you start with maybe your phone light or a torch light then you find where a lantern is and you can put that lantern and then if you're fortunate to have a generator you now use the torch light or the lantern or whatever kind of light to the generator house are we together as soon as you put on the generator you switch off the torch light is no longer needed because the light from the generator and depending on the capacity of the generator there are certain generators because they have low capacity you will off your AC you will off your fridge the only thing that will be on is just the bulbs because the generator is too small and cannot carry the weight are we together now the load that is in your house is too much for that generator 
but let's assume that you have a generator large enough to take a number of your appliances please look up how many of you know that as you run that generator your greatest expectation is not to run on gen forever you are hoping that the power holding company will normalize light and as soon as you see your indicators show you that there's light as it has come from the power holding company what do you do you switch on your gen and if it's in the night you on your security light and the moment you get to morning do you leave the light on you switch them on because the light of the sun is there look at the various progressions so if i see you with a torch light in the night you cannot camp around that torch light and say i'm fine i'm fine this is my expectation now the torch light if you do not have that torch light you may not even get to the generator room am i right on that so whilst you have that torch light you are grateful for it but you know that that is not your ultimate expectation so the torch light helps you so far until you get to a lantern until you get to a generator room and then eventually if you're fortunate light now is restored and then you switch on the generator are we together now and then by morning you are happy because you don't have to pay anything for sunlight it is one of the reasons why you are happy do you know that there are limitations to the lights that you have in your house for instance it cannot except you are using a washing machine the light that is generated from your generator or the power holding company may not easily and naturally dry your clothes so it still has limitations when you want to dry your clothes, you don't put it under a phone light. By morning, it will still be wet. That light does not have the kind of power. Are we together now? Yes. Even if you own the gen and you put it, sometimes you can use your iron and force a wet cloth to be dry. There are consequences. It can turn a white material to look something else because you were using an unnatural means. Are we together? But try the sun. Try the sun in Abuja. Are we together? You hang that thing there and sometimes before you are done strolling, half of it is already done. Greater light. Producing different levels of results. Helping you to command different dimensions of dominion. So the Bible says he made two great lights. And then he made the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Now that God has helped you to come into your day, the light that helps you to be in command even during the day, let that light rest upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For instance, I give you an example. If you are called into the ministry, there is a level of light that helps you to jumpstart the work of the ministry as committed to you. But by the time you get to a point where by mercy and by grace you have gotten to your day, the dynamics will change. Are we together? The kind of light you need to sustain a ministry like this by the grace of God is not the kind of light. The light that was given to me that was used to start Koinonia, if I use that kind of light, it would not even last one day. No. No. There is greater light and it keeps getting greater. Are we together? The dynamics of leadership, the dynamics of spirituality, accessing higher and greater levels of grace. Praise the name of the Lord. That's Azaria family following. God bless them in the name of Jesus. So I'm saying that the level of light, illumination that you have determines the kind of command that you have. Are we together now? For many of us, you have light, but you've been camping around a torch light and wondering why your house is not shining bright. Some of you have been holding a lantern and your oil is almost about to dry off. I'm here to bridge the gap so you will not be called a foolish virgin. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we together now? And there are others God has granted you a generator set but I hope you know that as he keeps expanding you, it will get to a time where the load will be too heavy for that generator you are carrying. And there are many things it cannot do, even though it produces light. But I'm praying that for someone it will be like the light of the sun. In the name of Jesus Christ.
it will be like the light of the sun that anything that is wet you can drop it there and in a matter of minutes even if it's a destiny even if it's, i mean you will command results at a frequency that will cause you to marvel yourself may this greater light rest upon you in the name of jesus christ all right so let's go to the word of god genesis chapter 1 please from verse 26 down to 28 we're dealing with greater light the mysteries of dominion this is part one and God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fall of the air over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth amplified please verse 26 back to 26 amplified there's something I want you to see ah, what version of amplified are you guys using here my version of amplified there's something I'm looking for do we try amplified classic will it have what we're looking for there is an information about um, okay so let's make do with what we have so that we we'll save time God said amplified says here let us father son Holy Spirit make mankind in our image now is the word image that i wanted to give you greater clarity but i'll still do the teaching Our amplified version as projected here doesn't do the kind of justice we're looking for after our likeness it says and let them have complete authority now back to kjv let's do 27 and 28 so that i'll begin to teach 27 28 kjv so god created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. 28. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. So the Bible tells us in verse 28 26 now that god created man and there were two very important information here that i want you to get please listen carefully we're discussing greater light that god created man number one in his image everybody say image one more time shout it say image and then the bible says after his likeness so god created man it matters that you understand how god created man and the components that were present at his creation so god created man in his image and then after his likeness let me try to pull up genesis 1 26 from my own amplified rendition here and then i'll read for you what it says from my amplified rendition this is what it says and god said let us father son holy spirit make man in our image according to our likeness then it says not physical but a spiritual personality and moral likeness then it says and let them have complete authority and then it reads on are we together now so the bible tells us that god made man thank you very much media god bless you god made man in his image and then after his likeness you have to understand these twofold dimensions what exactly does it mean for man to be made in the image of god because no other creature was made in the image of god no other creature was made in the image of god only man was made in the image of god so here we have the making of man image and likeness image and likeness i'll tell you very quickly what the image of god is the image of god talks about the spiritual quality the nature of god the spiritual quality the image of god is not something physical it is the spiritual quality are we together a spiritual quality the image of god 
the nature of God. And then the Bible says man was made in the likeness of God. The word likeness here means to function like God. To function like God. So when the Bible says man was made in the image of God, it means that God captured the essence of who he is and he imprinted it upon that man. And like you'll be learning, the image of God as revealed in scripture most visibly manifest is Christ. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. That should be Hebrews 1 and verse 2. The express image, 1 verse 3, of the invisible God. Are we together? The express image of his person. That means if you want to know what God looks like, the nature of God. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he revealed for us, he gave us an opportunity to really know what God looks like. I've done several teachings there, but it's important that you understand this. Listen, no man will be able to walk in true dominion if you do not understand these two dimensions. The image of God and the likeness of God. The nature of God and then how God functions. And I want you to walk with me very carefully tonight as we unravel these two dimensions. Greater light. If you want to access the grace for dominion, you want to live an invincible life within this side of God's kingdom, then you have to understand the implication of being created the way you were created. There was every kind of intention invested in the creation of man the way God created him. And if you do not subscribe to that template, something will be wrong with your exercising authority. Something will be wrong with the quality of your Christian experience. Something will be wrong with the kinds of results that you command in life, in business, in destiny. The key is to go back to the original template and find out the implication of being created in the image of God being created in the likeness of God. Please look up. Do you know why the fish in the sea never have a problem swimming? Because they have not violated the template of their design till today. Can you imagine that the fish do not have precedents, governors, they do not have advancement in terms of uh, the human kind of civilization. And yet you go to any sea across the globe, you find fishes swimming very freely are we together the reason is because they walked in keeping with the templates that was given originally how about animals they have their own primitive way of leadership and all of that but isn't it amazing that even in the animal world there is no guarantee for anything no guarantee for food because you can be a prey today and be a predator tomorrow what sort of a life is that? You are not even sure of what you will become any day. So you can kill an animal today and by tomorrow you are the one who will be killed. Depending on where you are, the mistake of location can turn you into a prey immediately. And yet, in the midst of all of these things, can you imagine that the animal kingdom continues to thrive in spite of the volcanoes, in spite of the tornadoes, in spite of the wickedness of men, in spite of what we have done to them? Hallelujah. I said we, so don't, don't look at me. I, I included myself there. You know the amount of fish we eat per day? You have no idea. You know the amount of goats that die per day? Cows that die per day? Including today. Are we together now? And isn't it amazing? Now listen, I'm saying this for a reason. That regardless the kind of disadvantage these lower animals have, because they were able to maintain status quo as designed, it still did not tamper with them. This is powerful. Very, very powerful. It is only humans. We are the most disoriented of God's creation. Even though by destiny and ordination, we are the highest of his creation. And I will tell you, the problem is that there is a high level deviation 
from God's pattern. And so we seek to command dominion using our own formula. And life has refused to obey us. It has refused to obey us financially. It has refused to obey us spiritually. The forces of darkness do not seem to pay attention nor respect our presence. God created man in his image and God created man after his likeness. Let's consider the image of God. I told you that the word image there is the nature of God. What is the implication of being created with potential to have and to manifest the nature of God? First and foremost, the Bible teaches us that the nature of God can be learned. The nature of God can be understood. I have shared this with you extensively in Isaiah chapter 40. Let's read verse 28 to 30. We are discussing the nature of God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Watch this now. The Bible says he fainted not. Now, do you know the implication of studying the nature of God? Because that is the accurate lens, the accurate vista. You know how far you can go. You know the implication of the nature you are carrying when you study God. In theology, we call it the reflection principle. All you are is derived from all that he is. You cannot know how much you have. You cannot know how far you can go. You cannot know how great you can become until you study him. The Bible says as he is, so are we in this world now. Are we learning now? So the Bible tells us that the creator of the ends of the earth, that he fainted not. And there is no searching of his understanding. 29. It says, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no mighty increased strength. I like 30. He says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Final verse 31. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know what he's telling you? He, be he begins by telling you that God, your creator, he does not faint and he's not weary. Then he says, as a man unassisted by God, you will faint and be weary. But that like God, you can rise to that realm where although you are a human being, the possibility of fainting and weariness will no longer be found in your life because you have outsourced a system that keeps you fresh, keeps you going, even though you are human. And he calls it waiting upon the Lord. That when you bring that mystery to your life, you can be like God in terms of manifesting that possibility. Who is learning now? Now let's go to one more scripture helping you to understand the nature of God so that you will see what he's done in your own life. This is very powerful. Psalm 145, please give us from verse 8. Let's see how far God will help us tonight. Psalm 145. Are you ready? The Bible says the Lord is gracious. The word gracious there means kind, is the quality of kindness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Look at me. Do you know what that means? Every believer in Christ who understands that he was built having the nature of God or the potential to manifest that nature, these possibilities should be captured in your life. Back to the scripture, please. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion that means i can be gracious and full of compassion regardless my background regardless my temperament i was created in the image and the likeness of god that means these qualities are compatible with my being that means my life and my reality should not fight my having these qualities because I was created in the image of Christ. Anything that is short of this, I must see it as a deviation to the original template. I'm, I must cooperate with the spirit of grace to see myself restored. This is what the status quo of the believer is. Gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Let's read on. The Lord is good to all the quality of goodness. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Next verse, please. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and the saints shall bless thee. Aha. Uh -huh. It says they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. Read on. 
to make known to the sons of men his mighty act and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Verse 13. He says, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Uh huh. Reading to 20. The Lord upholded all that fall. This is, he's describing for you the nature of God. And he raised all those that are bowed down. That means when you are becoming like Christ in experience, we should be finding through your life these manifestations. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in season. He's describing God for you now. Thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. You know why the fish still eat, even though they cannot talk. As we know you know why other animals as low as they are he is that intentional about their survival the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works are you learning now verse 18 the Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him and all upon and them that call upon him in truth verse 19 he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him I like this he will hear their cry and he will save them. Final verse, the Bible says, The Lord preserved all them that love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. This is a description of God's nature. It's important for you to learn the nature of God because the nature of God becomes your assignment as far as transformation is concerned. I told you that transformation is the name given to the journey that makes you become like the Christ in experience. Transformation should never, never be an impossible pursuit because you were originally designed to be like Christ. Are we together now? Next scripture, the nature of Christ. First John chapter 4, please. Give us 7 and we'll read down to verse 12. First John chapter 4, 7. Apostle John, John the beloved. Here's what he has to say about the nature of God as revealed in Christ Jesus. Beloved, he says, let us love one another. Now he talks about love. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Verse 8, it says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Say that after me. For God is love. One more time. For God is love. The next verse, please. It says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Next verse. It says, herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Final verse. We're reading to verse um, 12. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Verse 12. It says, no man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, it's proof that God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Someone say love. So the Bible says God is love. God is love. That that nature of love is the hallmark. Are we together now? When a man is carrying God, the ultimate proof that he's carrying God is not power. It is love. The very nature of the Christ. When you read Galatians chapter 5, when we get to verse 22, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit. Notice it never put an S to fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now when you read from KJV like you have learned, it looks like there are nine love, joy, peace, suffering, but I have taught you that the fruit of the Spirit is love. But that that love begins to express itself as joy, peace, patience or long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 23 now, meekness, temperance, and it says against such there is no law. Are we together? The fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the recreated human spirit, that means the nature of God finding expression within a recreated human spirit should be thus, love in all its variety as joy, as peace, as patience, as meekness. 
the nature of God. The Bible tells us that God is love. Jesus had this to say about himself in Matthew chapter 11. When we read 28 to 30, Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 to 30. Here's what it says. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. Verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me and learn of me for I am meek. This is what he's saying about himself as God incarnate. I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls. Come and learn of me for I am meek and I am lonely. Hallelujah. Now, do you know the implication of manifesting the love of God? There are many laws in the spirit that will not obey you until you walk in love. One of them is faith. Faith that moves mountains. Faith is not just a function of intelligence and light and understanding. What the battery that powers faith and causes the realm of the spirit to honor your speakings is when they find that nature of love, that nature of God in you. The Bible says God created man in his image. Are you seeing that now? Do you know? I have studied my Bible and I also studied the results that came from the apostles. I noticed that the extent of their exploits was largely dependent on the nature of the love of God that was at work in them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No wonder the one who is called John the Beloved, of all the encounters, nobody was given the privilege in as much as they met Jesus, they had all kinds of things. John had spectacular manifestations. Bible history would tell us that John was thrown in hot boiling oil and he would not even be roasted. He would not be burned. They didn't know what to do with him and so they banished him to an island called Patmos and that was where he received the revelation of Jesus as captured in this book that we call Revelation. Love. There are many people who want to walk in dominion. There are many people who want the laws of the spirit to work for them but they fast and pray sincerely so and they do not know that in order of priority until you are restored to this pattern where you manifest the image of Christ and then you function like Christ creation will obey you like they obeyed the son are we together now even among ministers of the gospel as we have seen, fathers, patriarchs, some have gone to be with the Lord, some are here now. Their, their exploits, I can tell you for many of them, is a function of their love life. The nature of Christ that has been formed within them. Many believers do not place value on embracing and seeking to see manifest in their life the nature of God. We are trying to function like God and I'll come to that shortly. So we speak like God, for instance. We command things to obey us like God, for instance. And then they do not seem to obey us. It is the same scripture that Jesus, you know, spoke that if, in fact, it's even a capture of what he did. And you say it like he said and mean it like he meant, but you don't get the result because that nature has not been formed in you. And the realm of the spirit only honors those who have become a reflection of the nature. It is image and likeness, not likeness alone. Image and likeness. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I used to think it was just because of the excellency of revelation that they had. But now I'm learning by the spirit of God that it was the nature of God. The degree to which the nature of God is furnished in experience within you. I tell you that is the degree to which the realm of the spirit will comply to you as intended. Are we together? There are many people who do not pay attention to embracing and contending to see manifest in their lives the nature of God. Man was first created in the image, the image, the image, the image of Christ, the image of Christ, the image of Christ. When you understand this, 
mysteries like the communion can work for you otherwise you can take one full uh, uh what they call it now jar of that black currant and it will never do anything in your life you can eat the wafers finish it and you find out that no demon moves anywhere because you see you do not even understand the implication so most people do it as a ritual they take the wafers they swallow whatever it is no matter how small or how large in fact do you know Paul got angry and was even rebuking the people because they got to a point where they did not understand this implication of oneness with Christ that that mystery was supposed to reenact an experience within you the concept of that oneness that you are now inseparable as it is with God in Christ so it is with you and many people started taking that the wine and they got drunk and so many things were happening in the church in Corinth and Paul had to come and call for a conference and said nonsense is going on here I hear that some of you take this communion from the communion you get tipsy you fall and the essence of it that's where he began to talk about partaking of the body and the bread of Christ unworthily he says for this some of you are weak some of you are sick and some of you do sleep not discerning the Lord's body hallelujah the nature of Christ listen there was first a nature that Jesus had that made him victorious it was not just the things he said it was not just the things he did it was not just the places he went to there was something intrinsic within him for instance Jesus said this about himself that Satan cometh to me did you read that in your Bible and that he did not find anything he cometh to me he cometh to me meaning no matter what you know if Satan comes to you and can find something within you that becomes a connection point he has legal authorization be patient as we get to part two I will be teaching you something about altars and you will you will learn you will learn a very deep mystery that if you do not know you can be a prayer warrior you will still be frustrated you can be a giver you will still be frustrated you can be a sincere person you will still be frustrated you can quote scripture you will still be frustrated knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof I'm speaking to you that the realm of the spirit respects careers of the nature of Christ not in theory careers of the nature of Christ there is an elevation in experience in the spirit now from a human standpoint um, we don't seem to place so much value on people because we live in a wicked world and the more you are like Christ in this world people think you are cheap you are weak they take advantage of you but you do not know what happens to you in the realm of the spirit the greater credibility is not even among men we call it a man of character if you are meek you are humble these are wonderful things it can end your relationships but the the greater weight of carrying the nature of Christ is seen in the realm of the spirit it translates to a greater command of power creation will respond to you in a way that will surprise you if you do contend to have the nature of Christ for instance the Bible says faith works by love how many people have tried to fix unbelief by focusing on love most times when we want to fix unbelief we focus on revelation and there's nothing wrong with that but you get revelation and don't work on the love component the Bible says faith works by love are we together faith works by love the more you grow in understanding the love of Christ the more you grow in having that love I can tell you please look up as a man of God by the privilege of God's grace I understand a bit about working in the anointing and I have seen that most people cannot work in the anointing not because something is wrong with their prayer life not because something is wrong with revelation something is wrong with that nature component are we together when the love life representing other dimensions of the nature of christ finds expression in you and is fully formed within you there is no limit to the kind of power the kind of grace and the kind of glory that emanates from your life believers are you learning now 
it looks like a very simple subject but i'm telling you why creation is not respecting many of us the reason why you speak to situations and circumstances they do not hear you they do not pay attention they are not even interested i'll tell you why the reason is because you have not contended for that love you know our world has abused love when we say love what most people think of is a woman or if the female gender and something very weak and affectionate are we together the things that carry love in our world usually die for nothing and so we don't respect love when we say love you just think something that is so weak unto death no that should not be your description of love love is powerful it is god's very nature what faith could not do love did what power could not do love did it was love that finally nailed the subject of the fall of man sin satan hell and the grave it was love that dealt with those things on the cross not power hallelujah the nature of christ that everything you see reflected in the bible as the nature of god as revealed in Christ that must become your assignment I seek to be patient I seek to be kind I seek to be humble I seek to be gracious I seek to be merciful I seek to be loving inexperienced let me tell you the truth there are many diseases that will not be found in your life if the nature of God dwells in you I'm not talking about just from a spiritual standpoint from a psychological standpoint you will be delivered from many diseases like high blood pressure as a result of anger envy and jealousy the overthinking that comes from that state can kill you are we together do you know that many diseases that destroy people start from the realm of the mind an attitude of competition i need to get this i need to get this and you think and you are depressed are we together now you see the nature of christ was supposed to correct many things in our world many things we are fighting now and trying to manage with drugs with all due respect the ultimate cure is embracing the nature of christ and i'm not just talking about the supernatural implication of having that nature that the nature of christ itself dwelling in an environment of god's nature is therapeutic everything we do today from security to good nutrition is our human way of trying to simulate the atmosphere of the fruit of the spirit why do you get dogs you are looking for peace because you know there is some criminal somewhere who will not allow you have your peace are we together so the price of dogs have increased because of the problem of men and because of the absence of god's nature who is learning as much as you came to church even though it was the house of god you locked your car true or false why did you lock your car knowing that believers are the ones who are gathered here the bag you have now in church, you locked it and you are still watching it. Do you know why? Because not all men have faith. The awareness that human beings are tampering with the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit, the nature of Christ. There are businesses that have been formed as a result of that deviation. Isn't it amazing how much we invest in security today? I don't know anybody who intends to grow and last who does not invest in security security has become billion dollar businesses today you know why because somebody who does not have the nature of christ is still on earth and most likely near your neighborhood you can call him an armed robber you can call him a kidnapper these are the deficiencies of not having the nature of christ love joy peace is someone learning now when somebody because of an attitude of hatred goes to speak to your destiny helper and says don't promote this lady don't promote this man you see the reason why we even pray favor provoking prayers those prayers would not have been necessary in fact if everyone were walking with the nature of Christ because you know that wickedness is real and that people there are people who will vow vow to see that you do not rise vow to see that your children do not rise are we together 
Why do we pray against encounters with wicked and unreasonable people? The Bible says all men. It is not all men that have faith. I'm just telling you that most of the problems in the world today that we are trying to solve is a direct problem, is a consequence of the absence of the fruit of the Spirit. The absence of the fruit of the Spirit. That means the more you restore that nature, you are restoring everything to God's original pattern. Where did greed come from? Do you know how many problems in the world today exist just because of this one negative human trait called greed? There are wars today in our world fueled by greed. There are people in pain today caught see greed. There are companies that are folded today because of greed. Are we together? There are families crying over their loved ones today because of greed. I mean, just pick greed and self. How about hatred? Tell me all the problems in the world that exist today because of the deficiency of love. Hatred. There is a whole industry built around hatred. That means if hatred stops, the industry will die. Hallelujah. Who would have believed today, ladies and gentlemen, that billions of dollars is being transacted from nation to nation in the name of peacekeeping? You see that now? And we thank God for all those who work to keep peace across Africa, across the nations of the earth. But is it not because somebody is determined to distort God's order? There are different groups and different sects being formed around the world every day, every week because of the desire of men. Take pride as an example. I'm just showing you these things that most of the problems in the world, they are not the issues of policies. They are not government issues. They are not even issues of skin color. It's a deficiency of living in an environment that is bankrupt of the nature of God. This is the difference between heaven and earth. The first thing you see in heaven is not the power of God. It's an atmosphere that carries within it the nature of Christ. Let me tell you the truth. Look at me. If you want kingdom to come, the first thing you need is not a download of God's power. The first thing you need is a download of God's culture, God's environment, God's culture. Simulate an organization that has the fruit of the spirit and you will see the extent of advancement that will happen there. When you see companies grow and they tell you these companies are nice, do you know that they have brought policies that are consistent with the fruit of the spirit? That is the reason why they are going forward. Honor, they greet people, they show manners. Are we together now? They value integrity. You translate them into policies. All the nations today you call first world. Now, whether they believe in Jesus personally or not, I am saying any policy that simulates heaven is because it has captured within it the nature of God. They may not call it that way. We have millennium development goals. We have um, uh, all kinds of projects. UN, African Union, they are pushing all these things. And I've read some of them intelligently presented i can summarize all of them the world is in hunger looking for the nature of god they do not know it is god's nature they are trying to get they call it peace they call it justice they call it equity are we together now these are just intelligent intellectual names i am telling you the problem of the world today is that we have deviated from this reality of the image of christ and we are paying for it love 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 what makes somebody who is due for promotion and then they fight the person simply because of the color of his skin or the region that he comes from party spirit seditions these things are not found in the nature of christ he sits upon a throne that is made up of righteousness and justice every time men deviate from living in the environment of God's nature, God's love, the fruit of the spirit, there will be consequences. Who is learning so far? Build a business whose environment and whose culture is parallel and similar and 
in consistency with the fruit of the spirit and watch what happens to that business you literally can use the fruit of the spirit translate them into policies run your business and watch what happens in this organization there's love before you report anybody tell me three things you love about the person then you can criticize if you cannot tell me go back to your office fruit of the spirit you don't have to paste it on people's face and say the fruit of the spirit is love in this company there's joy are we together so as the ceo maybe once a week you stroll into every office crack a joke and let the people laugh and then you go back and see what happens to their productivity the fruit of the spirit is beyond just a nature it is the environment that optimizes the function of man when man goes out of the fruit of the spirit it's like a fish going out of water are you learning now it's like a bird not having the ability to fly when you rate a bird using the ability to swim it will fall short of it man has gone out of his spiritual ecosystem is the reason why we have sicknesses today we cannot explain is the reason why we are intellectual and yet not moving forward god created man in his image who is learning let me tell you the truth one of the secrets of longevity is to walk in the fruit of the spirit believe me when i tell you this the fruit of the spirit read it and pray it in your life that in the name of jesus i walk in love in the name of jesus i live a joyful life i will never wrinkle my face because of the problems happening around my nation while i am trusting god for a miracle you will tell yourself in the name of jesus i enjoy peace I refuse to overthink. My mind will not be stressed because of overthinking. There are young men today in their, their late teenage, early 20s who are having high blood pressure like people of 60 years because of worry. Jesus took time to warn us. He said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit? Who is learning now? To the point that in our world today, if they see you joyful and happy and jovial, People look at you and say, what is wrong with you? Do you know there are corporations that look for staff and what they are finding is the joy of the spirit? They don't know that's what they are finding. They just say you have to be friendly. What is friendliness? So when somebody comes who is very happy, a young lady greets everybody, they crack a joke, she laughs very generously and naturally. They say, this is my secretary. The man is an unbeliever, but he knows God when he sees it. Are you learning everybody you drive around your life is because you detected something in them that is in defiance to the nature of Christ you may not give it that definition but that is what why do you throw away someone and say you know what this person you won't be my friend again this one even though you are a sister in Christ you are not my sister again what is the difference you have found something that is in defiance Show me an individual who is a healthy capture of the fruit of the spirit. I show you a man who will be desired the same way you desire Jesus. Same way you desire Jesus. And it, it doesn't matter whether you are a preacher. Are we together now? It doesn't matter whoever you are. Once you carry that nature of Christ, you become the desire of nations the desire many people will want to come around you you are joyful you are patient take the quality of kindness I hope you are learning tonight there are people who are so kind if you don't see them after two days you feel as if you lost something where is this person she's so kind where is this man he's so kind you can give them a job not because of their degree because of that quality called kindness there are businesses that have been built. Why do comedians make a lot of money? How do you pay 30 pounds, 50 pounds, VIP 1,000 pounds, VVIP whatever it is, to sit down somewhere and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and go home? And you don't consider it silly. Do you know why? That is how desperate men are to look for joy and peace hallelujah now look up why do people drink themselves to stupor you meet all of them and say why are you like this look at we found you in a gutter they say my worries let me tell you 
there is peace that only Jesus gives. That guy is trying to use another route to seek to find that health of that nature called peace. Who is learning tonight? God knows what he built that he called man. We have distorted that architecture and we are paying the price today. There are people who cannot rejoice. There are people who are not gentle. We have cliches that support a rough, scattered and lawless life. We give it beautiful names, even though they are destructive traits. I'm a hustler, I'm a gra -gra -pest, that's how I am. You see that now? You are not gentle. To the point that some of us feel insulted when they say you are a gentleman. Say, I'm not, oh, I'm not. I was a gentleman and I suffered. I'm a rough man. I drag it. You slap me. I give you many slaps so that you will not slap me again. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Show me a husband that is a capture of the fruit of the spirit. I show you a man whose wife would thank God for him every day. Show me a wife who is a capture of the fruit of the spirit. I show you a woman who her husband will say thank God for you. Show me a child who is a capture of the fruit of the spirit. The parents will thank God for this child every day. When you say my child is stubborn, you are describing the absence of a fruit of the spirit whose name you do not know. So you call it stubborn. When you say my child is wicked, what are you saying? What is wickedness? The absence of goodness. The absence of kindness. So Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. And God said, I will allow my goodness. One of this quality. Let me tell you the truth. My greatest desire is not just to be a man of power. My greatest desire is not just to be a man of signs and wonders. When I seek to know the Lord the more, my greatest desire is that God will find greater space within this life to manifest his nature that the nations will see you and see that you are the most visible portrait of the Christ that they can trace. And it will not matter at that point whether you come from Nigeria or Ghana or South Africa or you are Yoruba or Igbo. Are you seeing now? Do you know that when you blame someone and say you are behaving like from so-so-so place, you are just using regions. But the truth is that it is the absence of the fruit of the Spirit when believers come together who are a rich manifestation of the fruit of the spirit you will not know any man in the flesh again you will not even know who comes from here or there who comes from ghana or south africa when the bible says that we come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ this is what it means that i can see a believer from abuja a believer from Lagos, a believer from Maiduguri, a believer from Ghana, South Africa, Zimbabwe, a believer from America, we can all come together and literally know we are a family because we have been bound by a common nature, not just a common creed. Are we together now? Yes. Why do you pay a, a huge amount of school fees parents to send your children to certain school? It is not just the educational standard in terms of the intellectual composition of the school. Most times when we award people degrees, we say they have qualified in both learning and character. Learning and character. Are we together now? Is the reason why when you find out that their character is compromised, even though they have earned that degree, you can withdraw it on account of that character. Are we together? The first component, you want creation to honor you. You want life to work for you. You want gates to be open for you. I tell you, pay the price to build within you. The nature of a Christian is the nature of God as revealed in Christ. He says, come and learn of me. Can you be somebody who is loving? Can you be somebody who is kind? Can you be somebody who is gentle? With all due respect for some of you, I'm describing a foreigner because it's not you at all. As I say gentle, you are wondering, kind, you are wondering, loving, patient. You are none of this. Welcome to church. This is where you will open up your heart and say, God, walk upon my heart. The Holy Spirit does an inner walk. An inner walk before he does an outer walk. That when you appear before men, 
The Jesus they've not seen, when they look at you, they know that you are the closest representation of him. You are gentle. You are kind. Life will work for you to the degree to which it finds the nature of Christ flowing in you. And let me tell you the truth. I respect psychology. And I know that we're taught that we have different temperaments, phlegmatics, choleric, sanguine, etc. I understand and I respect the experts who have come up with those things. But there's one thing I know. It doesn't matter what you are. You can change. Did you hear what I said? It doesn't matter. Fill your form and find out who you are. But you can change. For God's sake, you can change. Don't say I'm an angry person. It's something that I've told God. I, I am kind provided nobody looks for my trouble. But if you touch me, I'm like fire. Change. Change. Who is learning what I'm saying now? Yeah. To be like Christ. There are preachers who are not like Christ. Annoy them and you know they are not like Christ. And it's not something to be excited about. No. No, not at all. There are businessmen who love God, but place money in front of them. They forget they are businessmen. They will push anybody and march on any neck until they see profit. When they see the figure, uh -huh, they can say, you are my brother. What were you saying before? And while I, I owe it to train you by the Spirit, so that when people look at you, it's not by praying in tongues and manifesting power and signs and wonders. If that is the first thing people see about you to know you are a Christian, you are a faulty, distorted Christian. I'm telling you this sincerely. That when you show up on Monday, the reason why they say pastor is coming is not because you are holding a Bible that later you will steal. And it's not because you are using church words, oh, good afternoon, sir. How are you, uh, my brother, uh, sister, uh, this and that. No, that's wonderful. But the nature of Christ. Do you know there is a presence that the nature of Christ carries that is discernible even by a non-Christian? Have you found people just come to you and they sit and say, sorry, I want to share some things about my life. I will tell you what brought them. It is that nature of Christ, a meeting, drawing people the same way they would come to Jesus. That was what compelled Nicodemus to come to Jesus by night. Are you learning now? To be like Christ. To be like Christ in experience. Fight everything that violates his nature within you, the fruit of the Spirit. Open your Bible and look at it. This issue of temper, I need to deal with it. This issue of pride, I need to deal with it. When you, when you don't deal with it, it would destroy your destiny and stop you from becoming. Hallelujah. The nature of Christ finding expression please look at me let me have your attention I hope as you're laughing you're learning because we're dealing with very serious things here very serious things here you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you. look at me some of you can receive any other nature of Christ minus giving. You will prefer to love your enemy a thousand times than to give. Are we together? Once you hear giving like this, your spirit gets angry. I'm not asking you to give. I'm just telling you something is wrong. During offering, you act as if you are not in church. Once it's done and worship team stands, you lift your hand, you shout, you jump, you even push people around you. No. How about loving your brother? Some of you love God so much, but you hate every other person who is not him. Even those created in his image. You are a hypocrite. The Bible says you cannot claim to love God that you have not seen when you hate your brother that you have seen. There are people who come to church and sorry for whoever sits by your left and right. That becomes an uncomfortable service for them because you love God who you have not seen and the reason why you love him is because you have not seen him because when you see him he looks like your neighbor that you hate 
Are we learning now? In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. You got the glory. You got, you got the praise. You take the honor. I just wanna say thank you. You got the glory. You got the glory. You got the praise. You take the honor. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lay your hands gently on your head and cry to the Lord. Walk on my character. Walk on my character. Mention it by name. Walk on my character. Walk on my character. I, I came to church seeking for power, but walk on my character. I was not just created in the likeness of God. I was first created in the image of God, carrying his character, carrying his character, the image of God. Go ahead and pray. Embratila caparantos coti bracketi la cosia. Walk on my character. Someone pray. Cry unto the Lord. Shaleke parantas ke beleke pariata. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. To reflect the Christ like character. Cry unto the Lord. Walk upon my character. The fruit of the Spirit. Finding expression within me. Purge my life of wickedness. Purge my life of hatred. Someone pray. Purge my life of pride. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. Corporate people, let me challenge you in one minute. Anyone here who is a business owner, captain of industry in this house, let me challenge you. Go and translate the fruit of the spirit into policies. Let it become the code of conduct and the modus operandi that governs your company. Void of sentiments and watch what happens. I give you a guarantee. Turn it into policies. It doesn't matter whether your company captures believers, non-believers. You see, the fruit of the spirit was not supposed to produce fanatics. It was supposed to produce Christ-like individuals. If you're becoming a Christian, cannot allow you to be a blessing to non-Christians. You are not an authentic Christian. This is not a promotion of fanatism. I'm a friend to many people. I have my values. But I'm a friend to believers, non-believers. I meet with them. In the course of the things that we do, we interact with all kinds of people. Are we together? Use the fruit of the spirit. Design your policies. You are my driver. This is the policy. I want a joyful person smiling every day. If there is a reason why you cannot smile, let me know. Don't hold bitterness. Open up to me. Are we together? Politely so. Come up with a policy. Own the only kind of criticism allowed in this corporation is constructive criticism. If it will move the company forward, I am for it. If you are tearing other people, leave the company. It's better to lose one person than to lose the future of the company. Who is learning? Parents, use this to govern your house. Don't let people carry their atmosphere, antichrist, Babylonian atmosphere, and just come from the knock. You know, is the, 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 there's a familiar, there's a strange spirit about to enter your house. Now, in this house, when someone goes wrong, you say, I'm sorry, immediately, specifically, and it ends there. In this family, everybody is everybody's keeper. Are we together? In this family, there is mutual respect. There's no such thing as firstborn, lastborn. Everybody respects everybody. In this family, the man is head, not alpha and omega. So he can apologize if he's wrong. It doesn't matter that he's father. 
Are we together? Yeah. The day the children shout at the father, you don't tell uh, it's your fault. No, you don't shout at your father. That is wrong. Hey, my colleague shouts at his father in school. It is wrong with him, wrong with you. And if I catch you with that boy again, are we together? Yeah. You're laughing, but I mean what I'm saying. The fruit of the spirit should not only be in us. It should be translated into policies that becomes the environment for business, the environment for governance, the environment for leadership. I'm, I'm giving you, many of you, are, you, are, you are policy makers. I'm giving you a challenge. Go and use the template of the put together 12 or 13 character traits that represent the nature of God as found in Christ translate them into a business friendly atmosphere and watch what happens that every client that comes to this place you greet them with courtesy you demonstrate the nature of christ see what happens to your productivity you know the thing i like about faith the gospel must be taught in a way that is is useful to society i don't believe in teaching truths that produce fanatics without a point of application as far as you're becoming you're excelling and the building of a nation is concerned with all due respect let me challenge our correctional centers review what you are using to correct prisoners if not they, you are, they are only going out to return back again don't steal it's not how you turn thieves to saints i recommend with every sense of joy the fruit of the spirit yes sir turn it into programs if you walk in prisons here hear me it's my honest recommendation turn it into programs don't just say you know you see what you are doing you are now here and the person says, well I'm here you think it will change like that no the deliverance part you can do it or connect them to koinonia let me help you and do that one but once they are done, that rehabilitation. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If I were a policymaker from a governmental standpoint, I would put together people and recommend policies. And before you bring a policy, you must tell me the reference. Where did it come from? Are we together? So that we see where it has worked before you implement it. Don't ship everything to your organization and say one somebody ran a business with it did it produce results you teach the people within your organization when one person cries everybody cries that's how you build unity are we together when you are about to reward excellence you start by appreciating everybody then you appreciate the person who was uniquely exceptional the remaining find consolation because you started by telling them thank you too. But when you isolate others and you say you are not like these other foolish people, you have brought a lot of money to this corporation, you make them hate him. That was the mistake of Jacob. Jacob would have appreciated all his sons. Then he would have now given Joseph a coat of many colors. But he kept loving only Joseph and shouting it. And the brothers hated him for three reasons. Let me do a crash course and teach you three reasons why men hate you. Number one, men will hate you because of the love of your father towards you. In this case, God. Number two, men will hate you because of your dreams. They hated Joseph because of his dream. Number three, men hated him because of the gift his father gave him. The coat of many colors. Now, let's go very quickly to functioning like Christ. I hope someone is learning. So God made man, we are still considering Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, that God made man in his image. We are looking at the topic greater light and for part one we are considering the mysteries of dominion. And in a very unassuming way, I am showing you that your walking in the experience of dominion has a lot to do with your receiving, manifesting in experience the nature of Christ and creating an atmosphere that captures the nature of Christ. Now, let's look at what it means to function like God. This is what it means, the likeness of God. Now, please look up. I used to think the likeness of God means having the form of God. Even though that is true, it does not stop there. So when the Bible says God made man in the likeness of God, God has two hands, man has two hands. 
God, as we know, has revealed in Christ, has one head. Man has one head. Are we together? He walks upon his feet like man walks upon his feet. So there is the form of God. But then the greater implication of being built to function like Christ is that you must have the requisite knowledge. You must know how God walks. How God obtains results. How God manifests dominion. And then to replicate it in your life. And I want to open your eyes to a few things very quickly. Are you ready? To function like God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible tells us, let's look at a few things very quickly. My God. I'm already sensing a very strong anointing. That means something is going to happen here now. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created. Everybody say, God created. God created. One more time, shout it. Say, God created. God created. That means every other person he created is also a creator. Are we together? In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. So the Bible says that he created the heavens and he created the earth. That means within everybody, every believer is the ability to change your reality and to change your environment. That there is something within men in functioning like God. You have the liberty to fade away any scenery in your life that is inconsistent with God's blueprint. Are we together? The Bible did not say God explained. He said God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. What does this tell you? It means challenges, dark days are not unusual. Even God experienced it in his journey to creation. Are we together now? That you are going to face moments that may not be not so good. The Bible says the earth, for whatever reason, was now without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Lesson number three we learn. Never give up on things because they are not working. You are learning to function like God. When there was darkness, God did not run away. Waiting for someone to create light, then he will come back. The Bible says the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of that darkness. Upon the face of that water. The company is not working. Make it work. Don't run away. Are we together now? Anything that is not working, champions stay until they make it work. Verse 3. The Bible says, and God said. Everybody say, and God said. So we see now that God created. We see that God stayed. Even in the midst of an unfavorable environment. Now the Bible says God said. That means every spirit he created is a talking spirit. That you create realities by speaking. This is how God functions. God functions by saying. He frames realities by saying. The Bible says, and God said, he did not discuss the prevalent situation. He just said, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. The Bible says, and there was light. Number four, how to function like God. And God saw the power of vision. If you are to function like God, you must have the ability to see. God saw the light. You must see opportunities. God did not see the darkness, even though there was darkness. The Bible says God saw. It matters what you see, not just that you see. It matters what you see. Who is learning now? From verse 1 to 4, I'm showing you how to function like God. That God created. That when there was darkness and chaos and anarchy, he did not run away. He stood there and solved that problem. And that God spoke. He created man to have capacity to speak. And the Bible says God saw. Man can see. God has given every man the power of vision. The ability to see things as they, as they should be. Even if they are good, you can see it better. God saw the light. God saw the light. God saw the light. Who is learning? Very powerful. Most people do not know how to function like God. Let's read one Psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2. If you are learning, shout amen. amen. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Verse 2. It says, my help cometh from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. 
God is a maker. You know what it means to make? To make means to coordinate resources together to produce something glorious. That's what it means to make. To make is different from creation. God made man. God created man. You can create and you can make. Making requires intelligence. It is beyond speaking. You have to learn the art of bringing together all of the systems of advantage, humans, material resources together. That's how you make. And the Bible called God a maker. God called, I mean, the Bible calls him a maker. That means everyone is a maker. Everyone is a maker. Everyone is a maker. You can produce a glorious life. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Now, the Bible also tells us, like you have learned that God has, let's go to um, Revelation chapter 4, please, from verse 10 to 11. We're learning how to function like Christ. I'm showing you, he says, the four and twenty elders fell down before him and sat down on the throne and worshipped him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns before him saying, pay attention now, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, help me, and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I like these three words. Glory and honor and power. Glory and honor. You are worthy to receive. That means it should be captured in the life of every believer. Glory and honor and power. Say that after me. Glory and honor and power. Glory and honor and power. Everything that makes God, God, his wisdom, glory. Everything that makes God, God, his intelligence, glory. And the Bible says honor and then power found in him. And he must be found in all the saints. The Bible calls God Almighty not only the creator, it calls him the owner and the ruler of everything. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. I'm showing you a few things so that you will see how God functions. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. There you find it again. And the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and is in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Please look at me. Did you ever read in your Bible that we have been raised up with Christ? Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2. That means everything that God has that was invested in Christ. That is now the believer's reality. Listen, you cannot function like God until you know what God has. Until you know what God carries. Not just who he is. When you talk about who he is, you talk about his nature. But you must know what God has. Because it also belongs to you in Christ. Are we together? It belongs to you in Christ. Paul taught us that we are possessors of this. The Bible calls it inheritance in light. That the saints have an inheritance. And that inheritance is in light. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Bible tells us that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What did God give Jesus as a reflection of himself? He gave Jesus power. He gave Jesus authority. All the saints have power and the saints have authority. But the power and the authority they have is knowledge activated. Are we together? Knowledge activated. There is no mention in the Bible of God functioning in ignorance. That means in ignorance the saints cannot function like God. He dwells in the midst of light. He functions from a standpoint of light. He speaks in light. He acts in light. When the saints dwell and remain in darkness, they are not able to function like God. Now, Psalm 115, please, and verse 16. Let's hurry up. Psalm 115 and verse 16. The heaven, I like this. Even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's. Read with me, Koinonia. One to go. But the earth 
hath he given to the children of men. One more time. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The real trustee of this earth is everyone who is in Christ. Not everyone who is alive. Everyone who is in Christ. The real trustee of the earth, I repeat, is everyone who is in Christ. Not everyone who is alive. Let me tell you the truth. When you have these mentalities as a man of God, you know that you have a property somewhere. I don't know where it is, but there is somewhere. You know that the issue of housing is settled in Christ. It is just the wisdom for you to find your portion. But by this revelation, there is, you walk tall, not in pride, but in confidence, knowing that I may be in a rented apartment today, but in this planet called earth, there is a space for me. I am in Christ. The earth was willed to Abraham and to his seed, his seed being Christ. And since I am in Christ, I am a beneficiary, a partaker, not just the spiritual blessings, but the estate that was given to Abraham. Apostle, this is a nice word. You don't believe it, you will not have any land. I tell you. Hallelujah. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You have this revelation, you can function that way. You can know that there is a permanent site for Koinonia. You can know that there is a permanent site for every vision. You can know that where you are now, there is a place. I don't know where it is, but I know it is there. This revelation already is helping you function like God. Who is learning? Let me tell you some more how God functions. The Bible says, even God, look up please, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. That means God does not wait for things to manifest before he calls them. He calls them to manifest. You get up in the morning and with the spirit of vision, you begin to design a life using words. You are functioning like God. Do you believe this? Man was created in the image of God and he was created in the likeness of God. Now, there are a few things about man that I need you to know. About four of them, then I will show you three ways classically of functioning like Christ and we'll begin to pray. Number one, I've taught you in this place and let me repeat it, that man generally is the legitimate steward of the earth the legitimate steward of the earth is man generally god intended for the earth to come under the stewardship of men but because men have been separated now into fallen men and those who are in christ are we together access to be possessors stewards and custodians of god's property look at me if you have a son and you have a property and someone who is outside of that family wants to lay claim on the property, what do you do? You get a lawyer because something is wrong. Am I right on that? The prodigal son, provided he was within the family, he had access to his father's estate. When he chose as an act of his will to go out of the family, whatever he was given, that was all he had. He lost everything. When he came back into the fold, he now was reintroduced into that covenant of sonship. This is how it is. Make no mistakes about it. The earth may not be in the hands of believers now. It is clear that believers are not the ones who are possessors. And when I talk about the earth, I don't just talk about the land mass. Are we together? I'm not just talking about the land mass. I'm talking of manipulating the mind control systems too. The earth, believers are not supposed to be victims of policies and a modus operandi that is antichrist. It is because we do not understand how to function like Christ. We have been so reduced to a point where we are victims of anything that comes from anywhere. Unfortunately, Satan went ahead of many believers and he's captured the kings and the gatekeepers of the world. And they continue to manipulate the cosmos to come up with policies and come up with things that are antichrist. We are largely victims. But I believe in Jesus' name that things are changing. Amen. There are some of you here 
by accessing kingdom influence god is going to elevate you like esther and put you at strategic places where you will you will protect and defend the cause of the kingdom who believes what i'm saying refer to my message redefining the coming revival i teach you there that the coming revival will be beyond pulpits it will not be the way we have described. It will not just be the campaign of filling stadiums alone. God is going to be raising people strategically and he's going to be keeping them across several places. You will see Esther's in that revival. You will see Daniel's in that revival. It's not only Elijah's you will see. It's not only Paul's that you will see. You will see Gideon's that will arise. You will see Joseph's that will arise. Are we together now? The revival will not come the way we have seen the Welsh and the rest. It will not just be the revival of stadiums and healings and wheelchairs it will be revivals of changing policies rising to a point of kingdom influence where one man can single-handedly protect the cause of Christ across a continent with one policy one policy one policy let me tell you the truth not everybody is going to be a prophet not everybody is going to be an apostle not everybody is going to be a teacher and unfortunately we've marketed this ministry so much that anyone who is not in the fivefold fields is not part of God's program. No, go and read your Bible. The fivefold without a Daniel will be in trouble. It was because there was nobody in the parliament. And since Daniel was not there, nobody to defend him. If there were enough people in Babylon, they would have said, no, this policy, we cannot see how it applies to Babylon. It is dangerous when we only have Christians in church. It is dangerous for the nation. We must have Christians in the assemblies, in the presidency. Are we together? We must have Christians as CEOs. We must have Christians as policy makers. This is the apostolic model that was left with the church. There was a time the Lord told, uh, told Apostle Paul, I think, he said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. Your advantage is number. There are many people who are believers. We need vice chancellors who are men who function like God. Are we together now? We need lecturers who are men who function like God. We need chief medical directors who do not just understand medicine and surgery, but have the anointing. They know how to function like God. Are we together now? We need CEOs who are not just intelligent people counting Naira and Kobo and dollars, but people who can defend the cause of Christ. If you are one of such, shout a loud amen. When God created man in his image, let me tell you the truth. He did not create man to just attend miracle services and crusades forever. It is a very distorted theology of kingdom advance. A major part of a believer's life should not just be in church and crusade grounds. Church is a training ground. The cosmos is the field. If all we keep doing with all due respect is to bring members and keep pounding them with knowledge without a strategic way of helping them deploy it. Both we the men of God and the members will soon be frustrated. What I teach you now, tomorrow you are in your office. By Sunday you are excited to return because you've applied it and you've seen it work. Now coming to church becomes an exciting adventure. What more do I need to learn? I applied this and it worked like fire. I applied the law of honor, functioning like Christ. As a CEO, I, re I redesigned a model and in one week, doors of favor open. Why wouldn't you want to come to church? You would drag all your executives and say, let me tell you, church is not just a place that builds fanatics. It builds intelligent people that the world can apply to nation building. You've, you've heard me. You, you, can, you can literally bring statistics to show that from the time I became a member of this church, look at our productivity. This is the language that will subdue principalities and powers not just blind fanatism it will only work among a few small-minded people but at a macro level it will have no effect on god's program i'm telling you are we together do you realize that there is an intentional plot by hell oh i i wish i have the liberty to tell you the things that are cooking 
that will be unveiled as the days come and it is targeted at the church we have no idea the the spirit of the antichrist because we have refused to learn how to function in the image and the likeness of god darkness is brewing up policies brewing up strategies strategies to destroy schools strategies to destroy an entire generation of children and what are we doing in the church just shouting hallelujah which is important and we are losing our minds and not thinking we are not translating kingdom come intelligently to serve god's purpose but things are changing hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.